Hey, today I want to do a long-term review of my Trek Roscoe 8. I bought this bike two years ago after I was searching extensively for a capable trail bike. I was looking at Giant and Orbea and Specialized and other bike brands available here on the Isle of Man and finally settled on the Trek Roscoe 8. Join me as I tell you why I chose this and after two years whether I believe this was the right choice. Welcome to this long-term review. Let's do this. All right, so after two years, I've got things on the bike that is still original. I've got things that are replaced, that I replaced pretty quickly and, and some over the passage of time. And then there are some additions to the bike. Let's start with that which is still stock as I got it out of the box. Alrighty then, so let's start with Trex Alpha Gold Aluminium Frame. Now, according to the specifications, Trex own specifications, this frame can ride, uh, handle riders up to 130 kilograms. Now that's pretty big guys. I weighed in about 95 kilograms on any given day, so not a problem. Uh, the Alpha Gold frame is sturdy and hefty. I've gone down some pretty big drops, uh, and I just love the shape of it. You know, you've got this beautiful square down tube, and then a thinner cross tube, the upper tube there. The bike itself is about 14 and a half kilograms, and uh, what I see on the forums, whenever there's been problems with the frames, it seems that Trek has been pretty good in looking after their customers in supplying replacement frames. But this one has been solid throughout. Okay, so here's something that I've really enjoyed. In two years of riding, two years, I've yet to have a puncture. These are tubeless ready Maxxis Recon 27.5 by 2.8 mid fat tires. And they are awesome. They are awesome. Not one puncture. I better not have one going home today. Well, they are fitted on Bontrager rims, 28 hole, 40 millimeter width with Presta valves. It's a nice setup. You don't need to replace this. This is good stuff. SRAM NX gear shifting Eagles. Pretty good stuff. I think for the cost of the bike, this bike cost me 1500 quid back in uh, 2020. And uh, I, I think for the component, what they put on the bike it's it's decent stuff i've never had issues at the top end with these beautiful eagles uh, and, and they shift smoothly they shift beautifully both ways and i haven't had to replace anything on the lovely internal wiring so yeah still on the bike all right but what about the drivetrain well let me tell you about this drivetrain at the end of the day sram pg 1230 eagles it's a one by 12 setup the cassette is 11 to 50 it's a 12 speed offering a very wide range it's sufficient and then of course uh, it's powered here by these beautiful Truviton descendant 6k eagle cranks really for what i've been using this bike as a weekend warrior i didn't have to bother with my actual drivetrain it's been very very good throughout and i wonder if you've got a roscoe if you had to do much work on yours but after two years i'm still happy with the setup Every mountain biker needs a dropper post, and this one just happens to be a Trans XJD YSP18 dropper post. It's got 130 millimeter of travel. Now I'm 183 millimeters high, so this is absolutely plenty for me. And uh, it's again got this stunning internal routing, and so there's nothing that's clunky or unsightly. It's just a great dropper post that has stood the test of time. Well done. Well done, Trick. You've done well. Brakes. Whoop, whoop. On these brakes, we're talking Shimano hydraulic discs. It's uh, MT501 levers with MT500 calipers. And I, I want to say I probably should have upgraded this. this. This is the one component that I felt has let the bike down ever so slightly. I, I just, I've never been massively confident on the brakes. I don't know about you, but yeah, not great. And then finally, the fork. Look at this fork. It's a 130 millimeter rock shock, 35 gold fork, solo air sprung motion control dampeners on the top here. I mean, for a, a big guy like me, it's been plenty good. Really enjoyed this fork. Okay, so I decided to change location because where I was was getting a little bit windy. And, and, and let's face it, if you're still watching this video, it's because you're probably looking at a Roscoe. You're thinking, should I invest? in trick well keep watching i've gone through the things that were decent and good components the things that i kept on the bike now i want to look at a couple of things that i replaced and the first thing i want to start with is the pedals oh my goodness 
You know that awkward moment when, when you're trying to be kind, you, you, you don't really want to be rude to somebody, but the truth is so obvious. The pedals that the Trek Roscoe 8 came out with was terrible. And so they are some of the first things that I replaced. And I replaced them with these uh, Nuke Proof Neutron Evos. And apart from my shins, having come and had some seriously intimate meetings with these pedals, they are brilliant. Love the pedals. The next thing I replaced was the seat. Now, now this is funny. There was nothing wrong with Trek's original seat. It was a Bontrager Arvada seat. Um, but I put this on. It's a Sport Tourer, an FLX Sport Tourer. It's just got a little bit more flex in it. But when I got home and my wife saw it, she looked at it and said, why did you put an old man's seat on the bike? Look, I'm not a spring chicken anymore. And there is a video that I'll put in the description if you want to see exactly why I went with a little bit more flex. All right, now something I had to replace because it broke was my bottom bracket. Now it comes with the Truviton power spline, a 73 millimeter threaded cartridge. It's 118 millimeter spindle. You'll be able to buy this from most of your local bike shops. If you've got a Trek, you can get it off Amazon. Again, I did a review on it. It was actually great fun to replace that bottom bracket. Uh, and I replaced it like for like. The, the old one is pretty good. I replaced it with uh, what it came with. And yeah, so far, so good. Okay, let me turn the bike this way because I replaced the handlebars twice. Now the bike came out with Bontrager Alloy 31.8 millimeter, 15 millimeter rise handlebars. It was 750 millimeters wide and I wanted to replace it with fat bars. And so I replaced it initially with some black fat bars with 40 millimeter rise and 800 millimeter. It, it was pretty cool wide bars like this, but uh, fun for forest <laughs> forest riding. And then I replaced it with golden rental fat bars, a 30 millimeter rise and 760 millimeter width, a little bit more to my liking. This is the bee's knees. Love these handlebars. If you haven't got a pair of fat bars, save up spoil yourself and then of course i replaced the stem as well i had a bontrager comp stem on zero degrees 50 millimeters quite a long stem now now i replaced it because of the aesthetics you know there wasn't anything wrong with it it just didn't look that cool it's kind of like a thin black stem so i wanted something a bit more chunky a little more solid and so i replaced it with a 30 millimeter rental bar that just complements the handlebars beautifully and every time i look down i see the big r for that rental uh, make on it and i love it i think you will too and then finally these grips now it came out with black bontrager grips exactly like these but as you can see you probably can tell i like orange and so you know what i think handlebars is just one of those things that are personal taste you, you know you don't really uh, feel a massive difference between one set of handlebars to the next here in the UK, a set of handlebars could be a tenner, 15 quid. Now, they can become very expensive, but honestly, grips are grips. And these Montragers, I think they cost about 15 pounds, 10 to 15 pounds, I forget. But they look awesome in the orange. This really, I think, is personal preference. It doesn't make you a better rider. It just looks cooler as you go past your mate. And then the additions. Now, every manufacturer sells thousands, if not hundreds of thousands, of a particular model and additions are the little things that make the bike unique to you your special touch that which is going to help you to get your bike in a crowd of thousands and the first thing that i put on was frame protection yes ams high impact frame protection when you load the bike when you bomb the bike down the forest when you fall when you crash as things scrape and rock shoot out this beautiful high impact frame protection is ideal for keeping the bike in ship shape right following that is the mud guard now especially in winter time this side of the world it's not fun to have a whole back and crotch full of soupy wet cold mud and so these rock shock mud guards although cheap as chips has been a fantastic addition and they come in all manner of shapes and sizes and colors and this is a good buy this is something that should be in your christmas stocking if it's not there already a small little thing but a fun little thing little air valve cap these air valve caps come in different shapes different sizes some of them come with little lights in them uh, it's a bit of fun and i've got maybe 15 or 16 different colors and every now and again i will just just change color for the heck of it why not Ooh, and then a bit 
of name branding. Why is it that only the professionals can have their stuff branded? And so you can get something on Amazon or you can get something online. It costs next to nothing. Put a little branding on your gear. Let them know who it belongs to. <laughs> and when all is said and done, the piece de resistance, my Captain America badge, just because they don't do a Captain South Africa badge, but it is pretty cool. Love it. So having said all that, bottom line, should you buy this bike? Is it worth it after two years? Well, the bottom line, it's a great bike. If you're considering a Roscoe, go for it. A top tip would be this, whatever you go for, wash and lube faithfully as often as you're able and you won't go wrong. Most of the major components today are so close to one another. It's only when you spend big money that you start feeling big differences. So just keep your bike nice and lubed and nice and clean and it'll last. But this is not a high-end weapon, but rather a do-it-all dependable workhorse. It's a great drop, especially in tight corners and technical trails and fast descent with these fat tires. Not a commuter though. Let me just say this, don't think that you wanna buy this bike because you wanna to go to work and back every day with these big tires and hard work on the road. But it is an awesome trail bike. And it does what it says on the tin. It's all day fun. If you're listening wife, especially with that seat. And so after two years, would I buy this bike again? Absolutely. And I think you will find yourself saying the same. Now, I hope you enjoyed this review. Let me know what you think. Let me know what you're riding. Until next time, this is your mountain bike rookie. See you soon.